Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Mediocre Mahler, a mild-mannered survey of uninteresting recordings that that completely avoids. I said completely. Well, that's an that's a categorical statement, isn't it? That that largely avoids hyperbolic, hysterical, exaggerated craziness in talking about the quality of these particular performances. And today's mediocre Mahler conductor is none other than Bernard Heitink, a Mahler specialist. And the orchestra is none other than the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra of Amsterdam, which in those days was just the Concertgebouw Orchestra of Amsterdam. Another Mahler specialist ensemble. And the symphony is Symphony Number no. 6. And Boy, is this a mediocre performance, if ever I heard one. Heitink recorded the sixth twice. He did it once in Amsterdam and once in Berlin. Both are mediocre, but in slightly different ways. Now, this first version of the sixth, well, let's, let's for a minute, uh, make a sort of categorical statement, a general statement, um, but a nice one. Heitink had issues with the sixth symphony. I think it's probably fair to say. Um, it's cosmic, tragic qualities, um, the power and and sometimes brutality of the music. These were all things that, that he had a very, very hard time getting into. And in fact, in his first Mahler cycle, after doing a, a fairly tepid Mahler one, and then a remake, which was very, very fine, and then symphonies two and three, which were excellent and a decent, but perhaps not entirely characterful fourth, he seemed to have a, a lapse when it came to numbers five and six. The Concertgebouw Orchestra itself at that time was an orchestra more of elegance than of, of power and strength. Um, its sound was very characteristic. It's a sound which has since evaporated. They've begun to sound more like everybody else, but they've always had certain qualities. Fantastic woodwinds, for example. The percussion section was quite odd um, in terms of its competitors, for example. I mean, they used bell plates instead of bells, which had a, a fairly dim and, and, and less than captivating sound. They used uh, a tam-tam, which uh, it could sound excellent, but often simply was conspicuous by its absence. Phillips had not yet learned how to record bass frequencies, particularly the sound of the bass drum. Uh, they, their playing was crisp and rhythmic. They had nice, tight trombone sound, which was really quite, quite distinctive compared to other orchestras. It, was, it, it cut through the texture beautifully without having to be overbearing. But Heitink himself seemed to be uh, repelled if that's the word, or, or nonplussed, maybe since we're being mild-mannered, by the emotional intensity of the Sixth Symphony. And his first performance is the, the iconic musical equivalent to tepid bathwater. And that is, is what it is. It, it never reaches paroxysms of tragedy. Um, and it's nice. It's pretty. It's, it's, it, but that's it. That's it. There's, there's, there's nothing more there. And when he remade the sixth with the Berlin Philharmonic, uh, that was an orchestra that had a little bit more, more, um, I, let's say, energy and, and weight and solidity than the Concertgebouw of the 1960s. Um, but that performance was, was uh, Heitink at his, you know, dour and, and less than energized um, phase. So that had other issues, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about his first one. There are some conductors who simply shouldn't conduct certain repertoire because they are temperamentally unsuited to it. Heitink was temperamentally unsuited to quite a bit of repertoire, actually. Um, he, he was not somebody to let go emotionally, and he wasn't somebody who was going to encourage the orchestra to, you know, Empyrean heights of unsurpassable, um, you know, whatever. Uh, curiously, when it came to the Seventh Symphony, a more abstract work, 
one which was full of of, of strange sounds and 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 interesting formal issues. He was marvelous. He was always a, a fine conductor when he was rooting for the underdog, for the less popular or less familiar works. Witness his recording of Shostakovich 12th, which is definitely one of the best ones of those that's ever been done. They could really get behind those pieces. But the Mahler 6th threw him. It's really that simple. And, uh, you know, I don't need to, to get carried away and say that the performance is, is dreadful and use all kinds of exaggerated language about, you know, to, to dump all over it because that's not the kind of performance it is. It's a tepid performance of the sixth. And tepid performances um, where, you know, the first movement is a quick march without too much bite and the, the scherzo is, is, is not terribly sinister and the slow movement is pretty but the climax doesn't have that painful intensity that Mahler wrote into it. The finale, oh, the finale, with the hammer blows that go for nothing and the, you know, bells and tam-tams and other exotica, which give the, the, the movement so much color and, 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 and you know, atmosphere. It, it's all lacking. It's all lacking. And uh, it's pity, but it just goes to show. Um, and it's really actually a good thing that the great composers, Beethoven, Mahler, even Brahms, Bruckner, you know, those people, they are greater than usually any one artist can fully encompass in a cycle of works. Everybody has their ups and downs, their pluses and minuses. So, uh, but Haitink was obligated to complete his Mahler cycle, and so he had to play all of this stuff, whether he was ready to do it or not. And Haitink was also a conductor who matured over time in some respects, um, who clearly wasn't ready to do some repertoire. Remember, the Konserchava would not permit him to conduct a Beethoven cycle. They gave it to Eugen Jochum um, at the time, and he was very upset with that. And he went and did it in London with the London Philharmonic, and that also turned out to be the apotheosis of mediocrity. Well, you can't be an apotheosis if we're being tepid and mild-mannered, can you? So it's also quite mediocre, which he later admitted that he wasn't ready. Well, he wasn't ready to do the Mahler sixth in this. Here it is, his first Mahler cycle with the Kitzerkebel. It is mediocre. So there you have it, my friends, another exemplar of Mahlerian mediocrity from very capable conductors and, and very fine orchestras. It just goes to show that mediocrity is always just around the corner. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.